All right, so Tessa Virtue, this is what her life used to look like. How does someone whose life is travel and movement and that thing where they spin around for a long time and somehow don't throw up, how do they adjust to a life inside their homes? Well, let's find out. Tessa Virtue, how are you? How are you holding up? I'm doing okay, all things considered. How are you doing? Thanks for asking. You know, I'm okay. I'm, I'm spending a lot of time here on the couch watching TV. I picked up running, which is something I never thought I'd ever do before. Uh, I think I'm doing all right. I'm in awe of anyone who can run. I mean, you couldn't pay me to run around the block. So kudos to you. I'm very impressed. You're an Olympian. What are you talking about? I just assume you can, like, you know, run for six days or something like that. <laughs> I could sprint. I just can't do the long endurance kind of sports. I'll work on that, though. What else have you been up to? Like, what, how have you been spending your time inside? I'm, I'm, we'll be starting my executive MBA program through Queens uh, Smith School of Business this fall. So in the meantime, I've been doing a lot of preparatory math work with stats and accounting, finance. <laughs> Coming from a psychology major, it's uh, a bit of a shift. Yeah, and why did you decide to go down that path? I've always been business-minded, or certainly since, I would say, the Vancouver Olympics, when we were sort of thrust into that corporate world, and I found that I really took a liking to it. And I have an entrepreneurial spirit, simply because I'm used to being my own boss, and I'm eager for both the challenge of, you know, setting a new goal and working towards it, but also just to, to dive in and learn in a new way. I mean, I never want to be the girl that was just given an opportunity because she was good at ice dance, I would really like to earn that. And even things like the language and tangible workplace experience, those are things that I'm craving. As someone who's probably pretty mindful, have you noticed some things about yourself during this pandemic that perhaps you didn't know about yourself going into it? Yes, um, and I'm trying to take note of that. I think I haven't given myself much of a chance previously to slow down. And I always felt restless if I was in one place longer than just a few days. So I was able to work my schedule to accommodate that. And I think sort of suppressed a lot of that unease just by keeping busy and diving into work. And I've really had to face that in, in taking time to understand my process and figure out, as you say, like, what is it that motivates me? Why is it that I want to do the work that I'm striving for? And just being okay with sort of the simple mundane tasks and, and finding validation through those instead of, you know, the benchmark of being the best in the world. It's been a really interesting thing to reconcile. Does that same drive that drives you to be a great ice dancer, that drives you to be a great Olympian, is that sort of everywhere in your life? Like, is it there academically too? Yes. Yes, that's certainly. I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Um, and so I think that that desire to be as good as I possibly can be and to, you know, over deliver if possible, um, that's sort of ever present in my life. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about you, um, I saw this video of you um, and this young woman named Haley, who uh, was from Sick Kids, she was recovering from um, a dog attack. And I saw you guys dancing together. Do you recall that? Yes, of course. That was a memorable day. Tessa, that was such a beautiful moment watching you and Haley skate together. And I think this week we could use more beautiful moments, so we thought we'd invite Haley on to say hi. Hey. Hi, how are you? Good. I want to jump through the computer screen right now. Haley, what was your first thought when you found out you'd get to skate with Tessa? Um, it was actually really cool because it was like completely out of the blue and it was very, very cool that I got to meet Tessa. And it was a very good experience. Say, so, Haley, do you remember that you painted me those beautiful blue and white canvases? Oh yeah, I do remember those pieces of art. Mm -hmm. I have I have them prominently displayed at my cottage. They they match the water of of Lake Huron, and uh, but they make me think of you every time I see them. So special. It makes me feel really special to know that Tessa Virtue has my out hanging up in her cottage. <laughs> Tessa, anything you want to say to young skaters who are home right now, haven't been able to get out, haven't been able to be active? It's tough when, you, when you're not able to do what you love to do, but I think it's a great opportunity to pause and reframe the situation because there are so many things we can still do. And whether that's focus on what we're grateful for or practice our different dance styles, 
visualize our skating or um, do some off ice floor work. You know, there are so many ways to still grow and learn and evolve and improve so that when you do take the ice again, you certainly won't take it for granted, but you'll also be in an even better place for success. Well, it's been beautiful talking to the two of you and allowing you to reconnect. And thank you so much for your time and stay safe, the two of you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much, Haley. Thanks, Tom. I really appreciate it.